starting out, uh, my name is Mike Colangelo. I've been a professional full-time personal fitness trainer for 26 years. Uh, I've worked in a variety of uh, clubs up in the New Jersey area. And uh, in 2015, after clubs kept closing and I kept starting over again, I started my own LLC back in 2015. Uh, so I've been working for myself ever since. I've dealt with a lot of different types of clientele. Uh, as a matter of fact, I worked for a year and a half for a medical office, uh, chiropractic and general practitioner, and I did some of their uh, exercise therapy, they called it, which was, you know, rehab uh, for some of their patients uh, for that time, so that was very educational. And t tonight, we're going to go over everything generally that you need to know about back health, um, how to keep your back healthy, and if it isn't healthy, how to correct it and get it back to function and comfort, okay? Whoops. Okay, so these are the areas of the spine. Uh, you have your cervical spine, which is your neck area, your thoracic spine, which is your middle back, your lumbar vertebrae, which is where most people have back issues, and we're going to go over uh, some of the reasons for that later on in this lecture. And then you have your uh, sacral vertebrae down at the bottom of your back. Um, and the lumbar region is where a lot of the pressure from your movements centralize. Okay, so uh, we're going to go over how to avoid putting undue pressure on your lumbar spine as we go. Okay, so one of the problems with your low back can be disc injuries. And you can see from this diagram, you have a normal disc. It's got a lot of cushion to it. And if you can see, the spaces between the vertebrae are where the peripheral nerves come from the central nervous system, and they need adequate space <coughs> excuse me, to, to stay comfortable and functioning. Now you have uh, a disc below that that's degenerating. Now a major reason for degenerating discs is people go around dehydrated and don't realize they're dehydrated. Discs are up to 90% water and they need to be hydrated to stay full, strong, and functional. Okay? This Hydration issue affects a lot of other parts of the body as well in a negative way, but we're going to concentrate on just your back for tonight, okay? Now, a bulging disc is an injury. So there are two levels or, or two areas of the disc that we need to worry about. This is an inner uh, injury of the disc where it is completely herniated, but it is bulging and ready to herniate. As you can see here, it starts to occupy that space for the peripheral nerve, which is going to cause pressure and pain. And this is why we go to different medical uh, people that we're going to talk about later in the lecture uh, to get some relief for that. Below that, we have a disc herniation. This is when the disc completely ruptures and, and breaks loose and causes enormous amounts of pain. If you know anyone who's ever had a herniated disc, I'm sure they've told you how painful this is. Okay, and thinning disc is very similar to a degenerative disc, uh, only there's no, there's no uh, herniations or injuries to it, it's just thinning, okay? And then you have, uh, uh, below that, the disc uh, degeneration with uh, bone spurs uh, that go along with that. Okay, so this is a view uh, of a herniated disc. As you see here, there's the inner part of the disc and the outer part of the disc. When this ruptures, the, uh, the inner part of the disc comes out and perm uh, goes through where the, the space is, where your peripheral nerve goes through, and that impingement there between the uh, nerve and your spine is what causes enormous amounts of pain. Uh, there are many times this can lead to surgery, 
but we're going to go over later that you try one side of voice search if you can um, because there are other ways to deal with it. And this is a bulging disc. As you can see here, the bulging disc isn't as severe as the disc herniation, but by the diagram, it does go into that peripheral nerve space and can cause a lot of pain. Um, this is spinal stenosis. Spinal stenosis is uh, a narrowing of the space uh, in your spine, usually caused by arthritis, sometimes by injury, sometimes by genetics. And now, unfortunately, a lot of times, more times than not, this requires surgery to free up that space. Um, but hopefully no, nobody in here has spinal stenosis. It's kind of a, a nasty condition that you don't really want to deal with. And uh, hopefully none of you do. This is, if you're going to have any kind of a muscular back pain, this is what you want to have. This is temporary. Uh, this is a muscular strain of the back. Ironically, most back strains are in the lower portion of your back, right? There's a muscle down there called the, the erector spinae muscle, and this is where we reach uh, over. We pick up something heavy. Our muscles aren't uh, strong enough to deal with it, and we'll have something like a strain or a tear. This particular diagram shows um, a strain in the trapezius muscle, which is more in the upper portion of the back, but all muscle strains are basically the same. This can take up to uh, a week or two to heal up. If you do get an injury like this, ice right away, 20 minutes, 20, 20 minutes on, 20 minutes off, some anti-inflammatories, and uh, it usually fixes itself within a couple of weeks. Now, the other injuries we were talking about are more serious and more long-term. We're going to go over the people that you need to see to help you with those problems. So let's talk about prevention, okay? To prevent having these issues, we want to make sure, number one, that we stay hydrated. <clears throat> As we said before, the discs need hydration, so does every other part of your body. They can be up to 90% in water. If they don't have enough water, they start to shrink, they start to experience more pressure, and they can rupture or get into a, a bulging disc situation or disc degeneration. Okay? Proper lifting technique. We're going to go over this as well. A lot of people get those. Uh, muscular injuries from improper lifting technique. I was just explaining to Ed how I did that myself when I was doing yard work years ago. I was later in the day. I was tired of doing it. Instead of lifting this big boulder with my legs, I reached over and twisted like you're not supposed to do. And that was about two weeks of, uh, of pain. It was only a muscular problem, but it can even happen to personal trainers if they're not paying attention to what they're doing, right? Proper body weight. Okay, we're going to go over this in a little bit more detail too. If you are carrying excess body weight, this is going to put more strain on your back. Okay, it's a balance thing. If you have more weight in the front, then consequently you're going to have to support that weight with your back. And over time, if you have 20, 30 extra pounds, this is going to cause strain on your low back muscles and even into the spine itself, especially, again, if you're dehydrated, and uh, this is going to cause the problem to be worse. Now, core exercise. When your muscles around your spine are strong and flexible, they're going to protect your spine a lot better than if you're sedentary. Now, unfortunately today, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, uh, technology has given us a lot of sit-down desk jobs, which is great because you're likely not to get injured in a nice air-conditioned environment, but unfortunately, this causes your core muscles to weaken sitting a lot, causing your core muscles to, uh, to weaken, which can cause some back problems, okay? So we're going to go over some professionals that can help you beyond what it's going to 
talking with. We're going to go over chiropractic care, physical therapy, and as a last resort, surgery. Uh, has anyone in here had back surgery? How did you, you make out with it? Okay. <laughs> it, yeah, it's it can be a little bit rough. Uh, spine surgery. I tell people if you can go through physical therapy, chiropractic care, uh, if you can avoid it, it's it's kind of risky. But I do know of several people that tried everything else did surgery and made out well with it. I think they're getting better at it uh, in time, you know, as, as they're, they're advancing in technique, but it is kind of a scary surgery. And we try, want to try to avoid that if we can. Okay, let's go back to uh, dehydration and back pain. We talked about this already. And you can see that along here, if those discs that are holding uh, your body up, your spine's holding your body up, and these discs are shock absorbers for the spine. If they don't have enough hydration, they're going to lose volume. It's going to increase the pressure on those discs, and this can be the problem. Most of us go through life dehydrated. I had to personally uh, train myself to keep drinking uh, more fluids because ironically enough we don't seem to get thirsty until after we're already dehydrated that's kind of a kind of a weird thing but it is true so you, you want to drink probably 120 ounces of non-caffeinated fluid a day if you can especially in florida where it's really really hot 120 ounces yeah mm -hmm. Uh, 64 is what, a half gallon, right? Yeah. So about a gallon a day. Like ten, ten, eight ounce glasses, so you can see the math there, yeah. Yeah. So that would be uh, 16, right? Yeah. Yep. It is. It is. But yeah. Yeah. Non alcoholic, right. Now, if you're in an air-conditioned uh, environment all day, you may not need as much, but if you're outside, and especially in 95-degree heat, um, you're going to need that much water. You will. I do. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Yeah. Yeah. I actually... That is, that is a drawback. But I'd rather have uh, healthy kidneys and, and body and, and back than, than have to deal with uh, just going to the bathroom. Like, do you get water from the cafeteria? You do. So that you do. Unfor Unfortunately, most of us don't eat those kind of things. We eat a lot of processed food. So that's kind of why they tell us to drink more water. Okay, so let's talk about proper lifting techniques, right? Now, on the top, you can see how to lift things wrong. You see how the person's extended and they're using their low back to bring up 100% of that weight. And you can see at the top where his back is rounded. That's where the problem is. I see uh, people doing deadlifts uh, in gyms with a rounded back. Just it makes me cringe, actually, because when your back is rounded, uh, you're exposed to back injuries and back uh, muscular strains. On the bottom, Ed and I were just talking about this earlier, the proper way is to use your legs as your main uh, weight uh, moving apparatus because they're your strongest muscles. And you can see here how the figures spine is absolutely straight. So if you're going, say if I was going to lift this trap stand, a lot of people come up with their trap stand and try to use it this way. The proper way is to lift your legs in and try to 
because the legs will protect your back. And most people don't do this. Like I said, I did it when I was younger and hurt my own back. So this is kind of a common sense way that you can use to try to avoid any kind of back strains or back injuries. Okay? Excess body weight and back pain. So let's explain uh, the physics of this. If you are carrying around 20, 30 pounds of extra weight, Think about it. Take a 20 or 30 pound bomb, right? If you are an ideal weight, right? And you carry it around all day long. Isn't your low back going to start to start to hurt, right? It's almost the same thing when you're carrying too much body weight. So keeping an ideal body weight is good for every part of your health. But tonight we're going to talk about your back health. And a lot of folks who have uh, lower back strains or soreness, this in combination uh, with dehydration can be the genesis of those back issues. Um, I've been helping people get to their ideal weight for 26 years. If anyone wants help with that, you can get a free appointment with me at the end of the lecture. It's what I've been doing for you know, a long time, primarily, is helping people with their weight. And with this, even if you do have back issues, when you lose weight, strengthen all the muscles around your back, your abdominals, your obliques, your erectors. This, a lot of times, maybe through chiropractic care, maybe not, can get rid of some of that low back discomfort and return you to function. So it all goes back to really nutrition, hydration, and proper exercise to fix a lot of problems. Um, tonight we're having to talking about your back. Okay, so we're going to talk about some exercises. And uh, if you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook, I'm going to uh, provide videos of these exercises upon request. You just uh, instant message me and I can, I can send those to you. So we're going to talk about some basic ones that you can do at home, okay? So everyone has walls in them, right? Everybody's got a wall, right? So what you do is you want to take your hands and your legs, and you want to apply absolute muscular force, okay? So you're trying to build the muscles up your arm, right? And you want to stay straight on your back. Some of you can't turn over your throat to the knees, right? There's something called an isometric punch. You can do it with any hand. You can tighten your tongue, punch your chest in. You want to see some tightening. You want to see some. This will actually isometrically contract the abdominal plane and make strong. Some people take a bad abdominal exercise before. I don't know. And if you have trouble getting up and down, this is something that you can do uh, anywhere. Thank you. 
There are more advanced things that I could teach you in the gym, okay? But if you hydrate, get yourself to a proper body weight, and do some of these exercises, if you do have weakness around the spine, this will help you maybe offset the possibility of having back problems down the road, or if you, if you are having some muscular strain problems, some fatigue problems in your erectors, this may help you as well because you have to have a balance in your spine between your abdominals and your erectors. It's like, you know, yin and yang. So a lot of people, and this is another thing I want to go over, as far as exercises, people have this uh, misconception that if I do a thousand crunches, I'm going to burn fat around my abdominal region. That's not the way that works. And what happens is they keep doing these crunches and they neglect their lower back. So what happens is the abdominals become strong. You don't target burn fat at your abdominals. But now that your erectors and your lower back are inferior in strength, they're straining to keep up with your abdominals. Then you can run into muscular soreness with that. Everything when you train has to be balanced. Okay. Now we're going to go over physical therapy. A lot of people have muscular imbalances which cause lower back pain. And sometimes a physical therapist can help correct those with corrective exercises. Does anyone have any questions about that section? Pretty pretty basic, right? Yes. Push-ups are really for your chest. They, they do make you contract your abdominals, and they do work your core, but the primary mover is your chest. Secondary mover is, is your shoulders and triceps. Mm-hmm. That's quite a lot. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. I see something brewing, Howard. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's good. It's good big. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, that would be that would be a medical issue. A doctor would have to tell you that. But even if you do have arthritis, doing techniques like keeping yourself at at the proper weight, hydration, and core exercises can help with these happen or not. Okay, so the more pressure you can take off the spine, even if you do have uh, arthritis in your back, can still help you. But you have to be careful when going through that progression. Mm -hmm. Give me back off. Yeah. 
Could be. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Pain's an indicator of a problem. That no pain, no gain thing, what they're talking about, and that's been, been kind of misunderstood, is a muscular overload bone in the muscle. That's what they're talking about. When you're talking about sharp pain, that's the body telling you it's time to stop. Okay. So this is why I tell people to start with safe, basic stuff and gradually work your way up. Now, arthritis is something a, a trainer can help you with, but a physician could. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what you would want to do is get, if you wanted to uh, get help with that, get some paperwork from your doctor, instruct it to the doctor, and take it to a, a physical therapist or, or a trainer, and, and they would be able to uh, help you with the exercise. Now, if you're... If you're arthritic, you may be better off with a physical therapist, depending on the severity, right? A lot of trainers can help with those things. The more information either one of those two folks know, the better off they are. They, they know, you know, how much damage is there or how much of a problem is there and how far they can push you uh, without injuring you. Most of it is observational, but the more information that we have, the better off we are. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, do you want to end the Q&A? No, but I can send uh, videos of these exercises to you. Okay. So see me afterwards, and we'll mark your, your sheet on where... Uh, you want me to email the exercises to you. Okay. Anyone else in this section? We good? Okay. Now we're going to talk about chiropractic care. I have a personal story about this. I was sitting, uh, actually I was experiencing sciatic pain for a couple of years. And uh, I suspected it was from playing hockey and skating and getting hit and and um, that wear and tear, and <clears throat> I just suffered with it. I had some treatments for it, and it would keep coming back. Well, I was sitting at a red light in New Jersey, got rear-ended, where the guy was doing 40 miles an hour and never took breaks. Had me working for a chiropractor's office at that time, so I got first-class care because it was a car accident case, and uh, I went to the, to the chiro three days a week, uh, in two months, that pain has gone away and has not been back. Okay, so what a chiropractor will do is when you have a misalignment in the spine, that can also cause pressure on a peripheral nerve, um, and bother your disc, and they slowly manipulate you to get you back into alignment. Sometimes that's enough to correct the problem. It was enough in my case. Uh, sometimes it is not, depending on, on what your issue is. But I can tell you personally that I've been to uh, quite a few chiropractors over the years, and uh, they've all been really, really good, some better than others, obviously. Um, but I highly recommend uh, chiropractic care if you haven't already tried it and you, uh, you want to relieve your back pain. And also, you can get information from your chiro about what's causing the problems, and you can take that to a physical therapist or, or, or a gym trainer, and they can help you work through that. Um, it's a very safe practice. A lot of people are afraid of it. They're afraid to get their bones cracked. They're afraid to get injured. Um, there are some professional jealousies with physical therapists and chiropractors. I like them both. I think they're they're both great professions, and I think they uh, I think they complement each other. But sometimes there's a little personal jealousy there, unfortunately. But um, chiropractic care is, uh, is something that's really helped me through the years, and I would definitely recommend it. Okay, physical therapy for back pain. We touched upon this earlier. Um, there's a lot of cases where muscle imbalances can cause issues.
issues, orthopedic issues, not just with your back, with your knees, shoulders, um, anywhere on the body. Physical therapists are excellent at diagnosing these imbalances or, and designing an exercise program to get the body back into those balances that they need to function properly to relieve pressure on the joints. Um, this goes not just with your lower back, but particularly shoulders and knees. They're very good with that. So that may be something that your physician may recommend um, if you're having issues other than your low back or with your, with your back too. They're very, very good. Now these days, um, you have to have a PhD to be a physical therapist. So they're very, very well educated people and they can really, really help you in certain cases. Okay, now we're up to the last slide, which is surgery for back pain. If all else fails, you've tried every other avenue um, to relieve your pain and restore your mobility. Um, this is what most people do. They wait till they've exhausted every other option <clears throat> and go for back surgery. I had a client in New Jersey um, that had a fusion done and it worked really well for him. I was pretty worried about it, but um, he had a fusion done and it did relieve his pain. And uh, as far as I know, he's functioning really well right now. Uh, but I've heard a lot of other uh, stories where surgeries did not go well. Now, some of that is because the patient didn't follow through the way they're supposed to. Some of it was the damage is too great for the surgeon to overcome. It, it, it varies, but um, if you can avoid doing surgery, um, that's the way to go. But sometimes surgery is um, the only way that you're going to be able to fix the problem. So um, that's about the end of the presentation. Does anyone have any further questions? So you also mentioned the Mm -hmm. And I just need to get ready to do the fusion. Um, what you what 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 you what you could do is sit on a uh, an exercise ball, and that way you have to contract your muscles to keep balance. I don't keep it moving, right? Actually, that's what people do in offices these days. I don't know if you if you're aware of that, um, because of the sedentary problems and stiff back and everything. They actually make chairs um, out of uh, exercise balls, you know, the stability balls. And people sit on those while they're on the computer, which is really not a bad idea. Now, you, I mean, you can shift. I wouldn't cross my legs. You, you, you can sh shift around. Standing up occasionally would be ideal. Get some blood flow going. It's another thing. You, you, you sit too long, you're, you get stiff. Um, but ideally, if you can get up every 30 minutes and walk around, go to the water cooler, um, go to the ladies' room, ask a coworker a question up and down. I, I know the guys in, in these offices, I see them walking around a lot, which is good to get away from the desk. Um, yeah, sitting is, is not really great for you. But unfortunately, like I said before, the technology creates a lot of uh, desk jobs, as it were. Okay. No. Oh, I, oh I, I know that. That is the cat stretch. There's a lot of different names. It's, it's pretty much the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that stretches your back out. Um, yep, yep. That's more of a, of a stretch than an exercise. It's not going to build strength. It, it's going gonna, it's gonna to help your flexibility. And stretching is also something that you want to do. It's something I don't touch on well enough tonight. Um, stretching your muscles will keep them from getting stiff. They tend to get stiff if you don't move them or don't stretch them. So when you, 
you're sitting for a long while, get up, and you can do a hamstring stretch, which is, this is very good for Any other questions? Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed tonight's lecture. If you got something out of it, anyone who wants to see me, yes. Yes, I get a video is actually. Yeah. Mark, next you were you were you uh, signed in on the sign-in sheet, and I will send you those in your email. Okay. Okay. Yeah, just put a little asterisk there, and I'll get it to you. Okay. If anyone would like to uh, use their free appointment at the gym, all Floridian residents get a free appointment with me. Sixty minutes. Go over your particular uh, fitness needs, wants, desires. We'll go over your individual case, show you how to use the equipment, and get you started on a fitness regimen. That costs absolutely nothing. You're welcome to take advantage of that. I can schedule that for you right here. And other than that, I hope you got something out of the lecture, and thank you so much for coming. Okay. Sure, yep.